Good morning, St. John's. What a beautiful Sunday morning. Um, it is the third Sunday of Advent, and you are now joining the 2023 uh, St. John's Christmas concert. Welcome all. And thank you for joining us through in-person service here now. And thank you for uh, joining the online worship service through watching the church of Facebook. Uh, we are so blessed. Uh, we all got connected to one another. Uh, let me share some announcements if you're available. Please open your bulletin. Uh, flowers in both sides. Uh, they are from, uh, one is from the Rich and Maria Del Pigio, and to celebrate uh, for everybody a uh, Merry Christmas. And the other flowers in the sanctuary are in memory of Peter Peterson's 98th birthday with love, Emily, Patty, Debbie, Michael and Rachel, and Edgar and Alicia. So I recall that the Peter Peterson so loved at the Christmas season and the candlelight service. So yeah, happy birthday. And uh, next Sunday is Christmas Eve Sunday. They're quite different and strange this year. And the Sunday morning service, 10.30 a.m. regularly. And the night service is 7 p.m. A traditional candlelight service. Please join us and mark your calendar. And in this season of Advent, we want to help homeless people uh, through donating uh, for New Hope Housing. So please uh, check out the more detailed information on how to join uh, this mission project, uh, New Hope Housing. Uh, please keep the season of uh, praying for the homeless people in our neighborhood. And the one special uh, thank you note is that uh, we give a special thanks to Sanctuary Choir and the Belgium of Praise and uh, flutist Julia Morris and the violinist Kevin Farm and the uh, baritone uh, Zachary De Howe and also the one beautiful soloist today. Where is the Lord alive? She is ill this morning. Oh. So we'll Okay, oh my goodness, yeah. Hope for the next time, okay? All right. Uh, let us give a big hand to all who made a big concert today. Thank you. And I'd like to invite Brian Hills and the Madison's Land uh, to light uh, the Advent with the candle. Please open your bulletin and follow the liturgy of the candle lighting. Of God, on this third Sunday of Advent, we light this candle for joy and we wonder. Um. We light this candle for joy and we wonder. We light, we light this candle for joy.
join me for the affirmation of faith, the hymn book page 881, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, the born of the Virgin Mary, is suffered on the part of the Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. I'd like to invite all children, maybe all youth, uh, to come forward. Wow, I think uh, today is a homecoming youth day, right? Yeah. <laughs> good morning. So good to see you today. So uh, finally we are in winter break, right? Yeah. So any special plan uh, during uh, your winter Break. No plan? <laughs> All right, yeah. So, we often say that um, Christmas is whose birthday? Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. So, my question is that usually uh, when you have your birthday, what, what do you do? Okay, get gifts, okay. The big pressure, right? And then, what else? What do we do to celebrate the, uh, our birthday? Cake, eat cake, all right, yeah. And then, party, okay. Good. All right, usually uh, when we have a birthday, do we, we have a party. Uh, we celebrate and uh, we uh, present birthday gifts or something like that, or to eat out or something like that. But you know what? Uh, Christmas, although it is Jesus' birthday, but there's a one hidden message or action item whenever we celebrate Christmas Day. This is rethinking of or remembering of our rebirth, right? Yeah. Just as Jesus was born in this world, we were born, but the Jesus' birth always makes us to think of our rebirth as a people of God. So please, of course, we, we do have so many plans to celebrate winter break and the Christmas season, even the New Year's or year end, or whatever. But please, uh, we people of God are invited to uh, think of our rebirth in Christ our Lord. So maybe the Christmas is also our own birthday, right? Does it make sense? All right. Let's pray together. The Holy God, as we celebrate the Jesus' birthday, in this Advent and Christmas season, that we want to uh, rethink and refresh and remember our rebirth in Christ our Lord. To help us be born again, just as Jesus was born in this world. And thereby we want to be uh, reborn as the children of God and the people of Christ 
and disciple of the Lord. And to Christ we pray. Amen. All right. Enjoy this concert.
Joy because of the sacred promises. Receive these generous offerings and use them to spread the joy in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Spirit, we join me for the hymn of illumination, the hymn of page 240, the harp, the herald angels sing. The first verse is sung by the women and the second man, and we will sing the first three. The scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, from verses 57 to 66, and printed in the bulletin. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that 
that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives that had this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to be, give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth, the words opened, and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. The fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Eternal source of hope and of human destiny, we await impatiently your fuller revelation in time and history. And through the coming of Christ and through the commitment of our lives, reign among us on earth. To speak to us this moment. And to Christ we pray. Amen. And all people that cherish their names, that we all value our own names. That your name is more than the personal information in your birthday certificate. It shows a legacy, story, tradition, memories, or ancestral roots, and so on. The when Hannah gave birth to Eunice, we were asked to put uh, this newborn baby's name. Her last name is Park, after me. Uh, we decided her middle name, Song, after her mom's last name. So uh, the, for the Eunice name, the, both uh, the family uh, exist uh, in her name together. The, you also the had uh, the same experience as me the, when you were asked to create uh, your child's name. The thinking of the grandparents, parents, siblings, or someone in one's family, or a godfather, godmother. In this way, the one's name is being made. In Asian culture, especially in my home country, Korea, the people believe that the one's name has a special power uh, to make a one's destiny. And whenever their names are named or called in their whole life, uh, people believe that a kind of a mysterious power uh, would guide uh, their lives uh, like a his or her a name exactly. So the people are very careful uh, to create uh, someone's name. For this, the people consider uh, oriental philosophy and genealogy, even astrology, even yin and yang in Chinese philosophy, and everything good. Then my first name is Jie Wu, you just go by J.W. The Jie Wu was made by my grandmother, the mother's side. She was good at naming with oriental philosophy. The Jie means a prime minister. The Wu means to help. The, my grandmother wanted me to become a prime minister at the helping the so many people. Why not a president? I'm so sorry that, that my grandma was not a person of a big scale. <laughs> she should be more ambitious, right? Yeah. So, so of course, uh, nobody knew uh, the, what destiny would wait for in my life when I was born. However, the, my parents the, believed that uh, my name would form uh, my destiny. 
that whenever people called my name. So this is an example. So in my whole time, whole lifetime, that somebody they called them, calls me Jae Woo, that means you're gonna be prime minister, the helping people. <laughs> and the deal, Jae Woo, you're gonna be prime minister, the helping people. Jae Woo, the prime minister, the helping people. So tons of times, now I have heard my name, the wishing that I'm gonna be prime minister, the helping so many people. So. Let's go back to my reality. What am I doing now? <laughs> am I prime minister? No. But I could be a minister, right? At a certain point, my, the name that helped, my, helped me achieve my destiny 50% exactly. Guess what? Even if I am not a prime minister, I can upgrade my Amazon account uh, to prime a uh, membership anytime. <laughs> so I can be a prime minister anytime. Forget it. This is just a joke. Just joke. <laughs> yes, I believe that the, my name, the Jeu, still works in my life. Let's go back to the story today. As we noted, uh, the birth of John the Baptist required Zechariah, his father, the huge mute in silence mysteriously until John's circumcision when it was the eighth day after his birth. It appears that John's birth was sensational at the time in his town. No surprise at all. Uh, this baby's parents were uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth. Uh, they were both from the priest family. Uh, they were respected, honored, and loved by people. The most perfect couple in the Bible, I believe personally, but one issue for this lovely couple was, as we know, no baby, no child. So Luke chapter 1, the from verse 5 to 7, summarized uh, the who they were so wonderfully. In the days of King Herod, of Judea, uh, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was descended from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Uh, both of them they were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. To this hopeless and old couple, John was born. This baby became a superstar. And do you see the, all the enthusiastic welcoming and congratulations the, from his relatives and neighbors in the story? So Luke chapter 1, the verse 57 and 58 says, Now the time that came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that uh, the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. All people, relatives and neighbors, would have expected this newborn baby uh, to become a priest like Zechariah, his father. If so, uh, no need to spend, no need to waste time uh, to make his name. This newborn baby should be called Zechariah, period. No choice. To succeed in the royal priesthood in both dad and mom's family, this baby was destined to be a priest uh, from day one. So Luke chapter 1, verse 59 says, On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. Evidently, to name him Zechariah was the best plan for all. It was a guaranteed course to be successful. It is a safe game. 
But Zechariah and Elizabeth told the people that this child should be called John. In front of all the people who expected the baby to be called Zechariah, and when Zechariah confirmed that this, his son's name was John, he finally got his voice to back. The Luke chapter 1, the verses 63 and 64 says, he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John, and all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak praising God. The one of the lessons from Advent is to refresh our life orientation. The people dream of their success, goals, visions, and plans according to their expectation, recommendation, and guidance and standards. But Advent guides us to follow God's direction, not my own. As John the Baptist was called John, not Zechariah, we are asked to think of the name God wishes to call. So Advent and Christmas require us not only think of the birth of Jesus Christ, but also of our rebirth in Christ. This encourages and challenges us to live our new life because of Jesus Christ. Of course, we have our own names, right? We also are responsible for living a new life when we become Christians. This is another great name in our life, given from the Lord, our God. I believe this is your transformational experience from Zechariah to John. It is not conforming to what you have done as all relatives and neighbors naturally wanted to call the baby Zechariah. Our Advent journey always asks us to transform our lives by our new name and new identity, that is, the people of God. As we celebrate this Sunday at the St. John's Christmas concert, I am very, very grateful uh, to all uh, for serving all the beautiful music today. I know that it was a big transition year uh, for all choirs and badge of praise as they welcomed the new uh, director, Paul Tiganger. As the baby in the story today, today got a new name, the John, uh, by God, I believe the St. John's music ministry was reborn uh, this year. Uh, thank you all uh, for your dedication to serving uh, church music uh, through this year. Uh, so faithfully, uh, you are now uh, the choirs from heaven uh, to share the good news uh, with all in the world. So you have uh, your another name, right? Uh, God's choir. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray together. <clears throat> The Holy God, we celebrate your birth, your coming to world uh, through our beautiful music and bell sounds. And we glorify your name. We praise you only at this beautiful season. And as the John the Baptist experienced his mysterious uh, transformation in his life through the name change uh, from Zechariah uh, to John, to help us make a good use of the decision of Advent and to transform our lives, refreshing our memory, our identity, and our story with the Jesus Christ, our Lord. And to Christ we pray. Amen. And now the with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray at the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, the hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And once again, thank you so much for the all musicians, the Sanctuary Choir and the Badge of Praise, and the Kevin Farm, the Julius, and the Zachary, the Howe, and the Paul Kiganja to make this beautiful concert today. And thank you for all the visiting the St. John's. I know that some musicians, the family, and the friends, and the, 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 the join us today. So thank you so much. And now it's time to sing the closing hymn. Would you please stand up if you are able? Would you join me to singing the hymn book, page 238, Angels We Have Heard on High. Dear friends in Christ, to follow the light of hopes, the guiding star, to seek the child. Listen to the words of a heavenly host, to find the child. The offer as a gift, the best that you have, serve the child. The peace be among us, the God be with us 
Emmanuel. Amen. Please be seated.
Oh, yes, they shall be with the sun.